My name uh, was Sidney Zerinsky, that's what I was born with, but over the years of self-realization, I've been on some spiritual paths, and I've taken a, a Sikh name, which is, which is Hari Jot, which means God's light, and it sort of really has helped me in my endeavors, in my spiritual path, to live up to that uh, name. However, in the massage profession, I'm known as, and well known as Sidney Zerinsky, Dr. Z, as they call me in New York. And I, I, I go back uh, in the healing arts from 1952, so it's over 50 years that I've been uh, practicing in alternative, if you want to call it alternative medicine. I know that uh, we're interested in the massage profession, and that's what I would like to talk about a little bit. And, and how I was affiliated with the most prestigious school in the United States and the oldest school in the United States for uh, body work, so to speak, which is the Swedish Institute. And I was very honored to be a part of that program uh, at the school for about 20 years, where I started out as a teacher and then became director of the school. Let's go back a little history about uh, massage and why it's called the Swedish Institute. And by the way, I don't know if I said this, but as I said in earlier that it's the oldest school and most prestigious school in the United States. It was chartered in 1916, but it was active prior to that. But it became chartered in the state, uh, under state laws in New York around 1916. Mm -hmm. It was a very effective uh, program of of body work, and the body work that was used was the Swedish system or the Swedish massage. And, it, and the system is based on one that was developed by a man named Peter Henry Ling. He's not Chinese, he was Swedish. He was a gymnast and he was a physiologist. And, and so he worked a lot with athletes in, in gymnastic techniques. And he was always concerned when they got hurt, what more can he do for them? And so he started to study uh, about other things that were going on at the time. He discovered some uh, written material from a man named De Morant, who was a, uh, an embassy official in China from France. And this gentleman was so intrigued about Chinese healing that he made a lifetime study of it while he was in China. He learned about uh, acupuncture, he learned about exercise, he learned about various water therapies, and he learned about body work, the massage. And he wrote about it. And he wrote about 84 different techniques of uh, body work. But that uh, material that he wrote was based on a concept of, of uh, energy. But in those days, of course, Peter Henry Lee couldn't do that. But so he based his uh, principles of massage on anatomy and physiology. And out of the various forms of, of techniques that he studied from, the, from this uh, material that he read, he picked five movements, uh, stroking, kneading, pressing, vibration, and hacking or, or uh, tapping of the body. And he, of course, gave him the names in French because that was sort of the international language and this was coming out of France. So stroking and forms of stroking he called effleurage. Uh, the movements that knead uh, uh, and, and pick up the muscles, basically more of the muscle system, he called petrissage and uh, movements that cause shaking or vibration, he called vibration, and those movements that he used to, uh, um, to, co to cause like hammering and hacking and cupping, he called tapomon. And then he used a technique that was around the various joints of the body, primarily along the spine. He called the friction, friction. So those are the five basic movements based on the principles of anatomy and physiology, and they affected the muscles, the nerves, and the circulation primarily. 
So that, that, that's sort of the definition of what the Swedish system of massage is. I first started with the Swedish Institute in the 60s. There was no licensing in most states. So we had two programs. And, uh, one was a three-month program for people who wanted to do a general body massage. In fact, we even had a home study course for that program, and then the people would come in for, for practical study. And they got a certificate for general body massage, and they could work in a health club, in a health spa, whatever. And then we had our regular program, which uh, introduced them primarily to what we would call medical massage. And I, and, I, and I thought that worked very well. Those people who weren't interested, there was a lot of people who weren't interested in treating people for, uh, for ailments. I mean, it just didn't work for them. And then there were people that just didn't want to do general body massage techniques. So at that time, we had both. And then eventually, when licensing came to be more practical, we couldn't, we couldn't do uh, the three-month program.